Hey guys, what's going on? So I'm really happy to be coming to you again uh, for some more truth from the truck. It's been a little while and I'm still um, just going through Philippians chapter 1. It's, uh, if you saw the last video, Philippians 1, 15, 16, 17, 18, man, go back and watch that video about two months ago. It was a very convicting, wonderful passage of scripture and just um, a humbling passage of scripture. And we've been moving through chapter one of Philippians in our Truth from the Truck segments. Just a reminder: Look, Truth from the Truck is just a just kind of a fun idea of look. I you know I'm a man, and you don't have to be a man obviously to have time in your vehicle. Mothers go pick up kids and and go to work themselves and and do all kinds of things. Men go pick up kids and go to work themselves and do all kinds of things. Grocery store and parks and church and all kinds of different places we go. For instance, uh, a lot of my truth from the truck, most of it has been I'm pulling up to the hunting spot or I'm getting ready to leave the hunting spot or the, or the boat ramp, the fishing place, and I've got a few minutes. Well, right now I'm getting ready to go. I'm actually getting ready to go do another video for a, a beehive inspection. I'm parked. I'm sitting in the air conditioned, and I've got, I've got a couple minutes. Um, these are those little moments where I think we get a little too hectic in our and too speedy in our in our lives and it's like as soon as I pull up throw it in park I gotta jump out and start well I could or hey I got the word right here in my lap let's just take some time go through the word so just an encouragement to you um, when you when you arrive at that grocery store or you arrive at that um, carpool lane or when you arrive at that destination maybe you do have a little bit of time or when you're getting ready to leave maybe as you, you get the air conditioner on or if, or if it's winter time you get the heat on maybe as you're just waiting um, Maybe you do open it up, open up the word and, and, and read a little bit. So again, truth from the truck, couple minutes, just getting in the word of God. This is not our primary devotional tool, but it is an opportunity that, that doesn't have to be passed up on. So Philippians 1, moving forward, I'm going to pick up in verse 19 and read a couple of verses and we'll just see what, what else we can think on, meditate on real quick. It says this, for I know this and I got to go back into context this what the whole thing from the past couple episodes of truth from the truck Paul being in prison to Paul being in bonds Paul preaching the gospel nevertheless of where he's at uh, Paul um, as in the last episode of truth from the truck talking about people preaching Christ of envy and strife against Paul and him still rejoicing in the fact that they're preaching Christ and his attitude and his humility is key and he, he says I know all this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Verse 20, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt the two, having a desire to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you, with you all for the furtherance and joy of faith that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. I'm going to stop there because I could have stopped three or four verses prior. Man, the humility of Paul. So he says, I know this, verse 19, I know this, all these things. It kind of reminds me of scripture that says all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. It doesn't say all things work together for the good of you and what you want. <laughs> according to God's purpose. But what does he say? He says, this will turn out to my salvation. This is his preservation. He's saved. Salvation is, is a, you're justified in Christ. You're saved. If you believe you've turned from sin and trusted Christ, you are saved. You are sealed until the day of redemption. However, that salvation is being worked out through your life. That's that conformity to Christ. And so in all the jailing and in all the people, um, uh, blaspheming Paul's name and teaching contrary things of Christ out in the streets and all this he says I know it's all going to work out for the salvation through your prayers and the supply of the spirit Paul explicitly tells us in multiple places of scripture that the Holy Spirit sustains him the spirit is our sustainer that's why Christ said when he was getting ready to go up 
to the cross. He told the disciples, I will send a helper. John 14, I think. He said, I will send a helper, the Holy Spirit. He will come and dwell in you. Well, that's who Paul says is supplying him. I love that. He says, according, verse 20, to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I should be ashamed, but that in with all boldness, he's just reemphasizing what he said a few verses prior. Um, always Christ will be magnified. Then he goes on to say, in my body, whether by life or death, and in verse 21, one of the most popular verses in Scripture, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He says, look, I'm living for Jesus Christ, and if I die, <laughs> you're, get, you're putting me in his presence. So what? I love that mentality of Paul. It's not a careless mentality. It's, it's an absolute love for Christ mentality. Like, look, I'm living for you, Lord, and if, and if I die, I'm coming home. Regardless, I'm just living for Christ. I'm going to live for Christ. So that's why the persecution had nothing on Paul. It hurt him, and it, I'm sure it was very it was physically daunting. I'm sure it was spiritually and emotionally daunting, but he didn't care because he had the Holy Spirit to energize him and to keep him going, to sustain him. And he has the blessed hope and appearing of the Lord Jesus. Regardless, either Christ was coming back or he was going to go see Christ upon his death, and during the, during the in the time in between, he was living for Christ. It was all Christ with Paul. He says, verse 22, but if I live in the flesh, he says, but if I don't die and come home to you, Lord, um, then the fruit of your labor, he says, I have a straight between the two. He says, uh, I have a desire. I'd have a desire to depart. He, he says, I have a desire to be with you, Lord. He does. And that's being with Christ. He says, which is far better. He says, my desire to be, to, to die and go with Christ is better than, than this wicked world that we're living in. However, he says, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. He recognizes that the Lord has given him a job on this earth. And so you, Christian, are you tired? Are you, are you fed up? Are you, are you lacking energy? Well, God's got you here for a reason. God's got you here to abide with people who need to be discipled. God's got you here for a reason. When God gets through with you, he'll bring you on home. So don't be discouraged. Don't be tired. Don't be distraught. He's, you're just like Paul. God's got you here for a reason. And it's far better that you're here, apparently, because there's work to be done. Just like with Paul, he says, Nevertheless, to abide here in the flesh is more needful. Having this confidence, that I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ uh, for me by my coming to you again. Paul, again, and if you can go back to the very first one or two videos out of Philippians, Truth From The Truck, Paul's emphasis on rejoicing and fellowship with the brethren. Paul is really a good example for us, y'all. He trusts Christ completely with everything, from life to death. And he trusts the Holy Spirit to sustain him. And he craves and loves and admires uh, the brethren and fellowship with the brethren. Is that us? Is that you? Is that me? Am I so sustained by the Holy Spirit? Am I so willing to die for Christ, but knowing that I'm here on this earth, am I so ready to work for him? And do I so love and long and rejoice in the fellowship of the brethren? What is the fellowship of the brethren again? It's absolutely church. It's church. It's a meeting. It doesn't, I understand it doesn't have to be in the church building on Sunday morning, although that's a wonderful place to fellowship with the brethren. And you should fellowship with the brethren there. You should fellowship with the brethren at the church anytime you get a chance. But yes, outside of that, fellowshipping with the brethren in your homes and in your workplace and, and in your communities. Um, fellowship with the brethren should be a seven-day-a-week a week thing. Um, are we like Paul in our love for Christ and our love for the brethren? It's just more passages out of Philippians 1 about us as Christians. How do we live our lives and this is a good example so far everything we've read is just pointing us to living for christ living for christ in a specific way um, a scriptural way i pray this is a blessing to you i pray this is encouragement to you i encourage you to read philippians chapter one i am so eager to get to philippians two i cannot wait to do truth from the truck through philippians two but there's something for us here in philippians one something very special and i encourage you to Read it, meditate on it. God bless you. Have a great day. I'm going to go check these bees in this beehive. And um, I, play that, I pray that God will really bless you today. Have a nice day. Tune in again next time we get another video out.